Listen, y'all, I've never used Tinder. I don't intend on using Tinder, but after watching this documentary, I don't know why people swipe left, right, up, or down on that app. Man. What's going on everyone, James here with another real review and today I'm excited to talk about the new Netflix documentary, The Tinder Swindler. What a name. It's directed by Felicity Morris, who also directed a Netflix documentary, Don't F with Cats, and the F is not for forgive. Now, it debuts on Netflix February 2nd, so when you guys do watch this, I'm gonna need y'all to get loud down below in the comments and let me know what you think of the documentary. And for those like myself who didn't really know too much about this investigation years ago, I'm gonna try to keep this spoiler free because I think there are some plot points here that honestly are like, oh, they're mind blowing. But if you knew about the case already, they're probably not going to really blow your mind. Now, before again, we get into my review, I talk about what I liked and what I didn't like too much about this documentary. If it is your first time here at the channel, welcome to Real James, where I love talking about movies and TV just like this. So if you don't want to miss out, go ahead and hit the big red button below, subscribe to the channel, tap on that bell, and hit the thumbs up button if you are a big fan of these like true crime Netflix documentaries, because I am. And speaking of true crime, let me know down below which true crime documentary is your favorite, because I might need to start getting together a little recommendations list. Alrighty y'all, so let's dive right into it. Now for those who don't know too much about the documentary, it's sort of just this. It's basically about a con man who attracts women using the popular dating app Tinder and tricks them out of millions of dollars. And I ain't even lying to y'all, millions of dollars. Like the web here, it gets crazy. Like when things are revealed and the layers are peeled back, it actually can get a little intense and there's a great deal of tension in this documentary. So let's go ahead and just dive into what I thought worked in the positives about this documentary. And the one at the top of the list really is everything that happens in the second act. Once we get to the middle of this almost two hour documentary, I think that it's where it hits its stride. And what I mean by that is the investigation aspect of this when they go to, I believe it's VG newspapers. It's one of the bigger outlets in like over in international waters. I'll be honest with y'all, this is when the documentary gets really interesting because they're starting to go door knocking and finding out where Simon Levive is living. Simon Levive is the name of the con man and or one of the many names, I guess. Man, this dude is tough to keep up with, but it's kind of nuts because I think that this should have been the entire documentary. Yes, I understand having the testimonies from three women that are featured in this documentary, Cecilia, Pernella, and Eileen, I think her name is. Correct me if I'm wrong down below in the comments. But I do think that having their testimonies are crucial to this documentary. However, everything in the middle where they actually begin investigating this guy, that to me is where everything is the most interesting. Now, unfortunately, it doesn't last too long, but then there are those testimonials that we just talked about that I thought felt very cinematic and added a great deal of emotion to this documentary. For me, Cecilia's testimony was probably the most heartbreaking, and it actually got me kind of close to being teary-eyed because there are some things in this that you can definitely, it's easy to just write it off and just say, oh my god, she shouldn't have done that, she shouldn't have been with him. But you know what guys, unfortunately men are out here manipulating women and it's not okay. And this documentary does highlight the scary side effects of being, I guess, smitten with somebody who is living a lifestyle that is not exactly how it is on the surface. And Cecilia's story really is one of the more touching stories here. But towards the end, you start to see that it isn't always sorrowful. Yes, you know, they still do owe some money, okay, but it is going to be at least a little bit better for them to move along now that they have one another to lean on. So I do think that this documentary does a good job at maybe tying things together as we get into that third act. And also on a technical level, even though I haven't seen Don't F With Cats, I'd have to imagine it kind of feels similar to this. And what I mean by feel is that cinematic approach. There are cool B-roll moments where in between the stories, you start to see how they would kind of play out like those dramatic representations or portrayals of what maybe they did go through. So there are some moments where the music is kicking in the score is kind of not uh, ramping up i should say and the cinematography here in the middle of everything it really does add some flavor to this documentary so at least it kind of breaks up the monotony and we'll talk about that in a little bit but it does break up that repetitious nature that you start to see in the first and third acts and one thing i notice is that this documentary does challenge the viewer there's a moment here where they talk about or i should say they 
the victims talk about social media and when they came out with their stories, how everyone was saying they're just gold diggers, this and that. That's a little bit of a commentary, of course, on social media and the negative side effects of public discourse. But I will tell you that it does challenge the viewer in the sense that you either are going to immediately think, well, these women had it coming because they were just so naive or girl, why didn't you just stop loaning money to him or whatever the case might be. But it's sometimes not as easy because we're viewing this in hindsight. So I think that what the documentary does is it kind of presents the situation. It doesn't give you all the facts and info right away, but it does allow you to kind of go through this process with these victims. And by the end, for me, I was not really on the side of those people calling them greedy. I was on the side of basically being empathetic and thinking, man, these women didn't deserve this at all. And he deserves to be in prison for the rest of his life. And I do think this documentary is going to resonate a lot with millennials and Gen Zers. And the reason I say that is because there's this cool usage of WhatsApp and the text message conversations coming in almost in real time. So it does play and cater to those maybe who are using Tinder, WhatsApp, and these sort of applications versus those who might be looking for something that you would see on a and &E. and if you're looking for that it's probably not going to be as bare bones and grounded there's a great deal of the I, I guess like superimposed graphics that you tend to see in some of these other documentaries in the tinder swindler and that's basically because they don't have a lot of first-hand footage but when they do use first-hand footage from some of our victims here that are being interviewed i think that was very interesting however they reuse a lot of that footage because unfortunately they just don't have a lot of it so honestly guys those are the things that work with the tinder swindler but what doesn't work about this documentary and unfortunately I think that there's a lot here that doesn't work. I wanted to come into this documentary, especially after watching the trailer, and feel really impacted. But by the end, I just don't think that all that buildup was worth the payoff. And unfortunately, yes, the director and everyone producing this documentary, they're at the mercy of these true and real life events. So if Simon Levive, whether he was found guilty or not, I mean, they're basically at the mercy of those decisions. However, I feel like once the documentary ended and we were nearly two hours into this thing, I was a little disappointed. And there are a lot of moments where I felt the story structure was a little weird. The pacing for me was off, especially in the first and third acts, where it does take a little while to get out of the gates, and when we finally feel like we're getting into that next gear, we don't really linger in those moments for very long. So I remember when I was talking about the investigative moments being the best moments in this documentary, unfortunately that doesn't last for longer than maybe 20-25 minutes. And that is disappointing because I love hearing the testimonies and the stories because it adds, again, a lot of emotion to this documentary. But it feels like the documentary does get stuck in the mud a little bit. And I got a little tired of some of the graphics that they were using. It felt kind of repetitive. And not only that, I felt like there wasn't much of a voice for this documentary by the end either. It doesn't really stick the landing. And for me, I just don't know if this documentary was making a lasting impact enough to really justify that almost two hour runtime. If anything, I think some of this could have been trimmed down. And then there are some moments where you can tell the music is crescendoing and we're getting to this peak. And I felt honestly that it didn't really justify what it is that we were watching and hearing so there were a lot of big swings i would say in this and i unfortunately don't feel like there were a lot of hits now did the documentary make me feel frustrated for our victims absolutely so it at least resonated an emotional response for me but again i just was never fully invested in this because the documentary itself kind of was losing its way towards the end so i was actually looking at my watch and that third act and I thought to myself this is not a good sign I should be really locked into this documentary but coming off the high of everything that happened in the middle of this documentary nothing else could really compare and that was a little disappointing for me so overall you guys I think the tinder swindler kind of falls in the middle for me I didn't hate this documentary by any means and honestly I did enjoy some of the moments especially in the middle and then there were those moments where I felt a little icky about everything happening because I did feel helpless and I, I wanted to help these victims but unfortunately by the end I just don't think it wraps the bow up as neatly and when the credits roll I think oh that's it
And usually a good documentary will have me coming away feeling impacted, feeling like it will linger with me for the rest of the week, but the Tinder Swindler doesn't really get there for me. And again, there are some elements of this true story that kind of lessen the impact of the documentary itself and the investigation, but I will say that at least they did some things pretty well here, which is giving it an emotional layer thanks to Cecilia's story, and there's a great deal of cinematography here that really does work for me. So even though I didn't love the Tinder Swindler, I do think it's going to be worth a lot of people's time if you like true crime documentaries, but I will tell you don't come in expecting something that will blow your mind. Because again, the Tinder Swindler for me falls right in the middle, like a 3.5 out of 5. So even though I think it will probably trend this weekend on Netflix, I'm not so sure that this is going to last as long as the hype was for Don't F With Cats. So there you have it you guys, that's my real review of the Tinder Swindler. Again, it debuts on Netflix February 2nd, so when you see it, let me know down below in the comments exactly what you think about about this documentary. Do you agree with me? Do you disagree with me? Are you right in the middle? And if you haven't already, hit the big red button below, subscribe to the channel, tap on that bell, and hit the thumbs up button again if you are a fan of these kind of documentaries, because I'd imagine this is one of many for Netflix this year. Alrighty guys, again, thanks so much for watching, and I'll catch you at the next screening. I'm serious though. Tinder? They better go in there and change up some policies. I mean, why don't they just ban this guy?